Hey, I'm Destiny. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today we're going to be doing a video about the top 10 things you need to include in your hair business pitch. So the things I'm going to tell you today is things that I've used in a previous competition where I won $3,000 as a first place prize winner and an additional $500 as the people's choice. So these tips should help you get to the point to where you feel comfortable enough to say your pitch and make sure you're hitting all the key points so you can be clear, concise to your audience. At the end of this video, I included the entire pitch that I did so you can see how I introduced my business, what I said about the competition, what I plan to do with the prize money. So that complete video is gonna be at the end. The first thing you'll need to do is make sure you have a clear introduction. And in your introduction, you can just include your name, the name of your business, and what product or service you'll be offering. Number two, make sure you introduce the problem you'll be solving. So most of the time with hair extensions, like for me, the problem I was solving was that I was gonna have hair on hand because a lot of people didn't have hair on hand in the city and they had to order hair online. Number three, you need to present the solution to the problem you're gonna be solving. So whatever problem you came up with, you just pretty much need to tell the audience and the judges what's the solution to the problem that you came up with. Number four, you need to know your competition. So when you're conveying this information to the judges, you need to tell them who your competition is and what's gonna be your edge on the competition. What are you gonna do to stand out in the saturated hair markets? Number five, you need to know your target audience. So who is your customer? You can tell them the age, the gender, their hobbies, their income. If you're targeting low income families, high income families, you need to be able to convey this information to the judges so they can get a clear understanding of who you're trying to target. Number six, you need to have a clear market plan on how you're gonna reach your customer. Whether it's social media, influencer marketing, email marketing, pop-up shops, you just need to be able to tell the judges how you plan to reach your customer. Number seven is your current sales. This will be the time to let the judges know if you're already making money or not in your business. So you'll let them know if you have a website, how many sales you've made already. If you've done a pop-up shop, you'll, sell the, you'll tell them the success stories from that because this is your time to let them know that you've created this business model and it's a working business model because you're already making money. And if you don't include it in your pitch, they're going to ask you at the end, are you currently making money? So it'll be best to already have it in there so they don't even have any questions at the end. Number eight, you need to know your numbers. This is one of the most important things that judges look for in a pitch. They need to know your break-even point and also your profit margin. So these are things you need to include in your pitch because if you don't, they're going to ask you afterwards and it's very important for you to know this information. Number nine, you need to have a clear plan on how you plan to spend the prize money. You can't just go up there and say, I'm just gonna spend it on extra marketing materials. What marketing materials are you gonna spend it on? What new things are you gonna spend it on? How is it gonna help grow your business? They need to make sure that if they give you this prize money over someone else that it's at least gonna help grow your business. So number 10 is your outro. You'll be pretty much letting people know how they can get in contact with you, drop your social media handles, your website. If you have a brick and mortar, you can give them your location, your phone number, or anything they need to contact you. So those are the top 10 things that you need to make sure you include in your hair business pitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you my full video of the pitch that I gave. And at the end, you'll be able to see the different questions that the judges ask, just so you can get a full understanding of how these hair pitch competitions work. Hi, my name is Destiny Adams and I'm the owner of Destiny Hair Collection. Finding quality hair extensions has always been a challenge in Grand Rapids. When you go to our local beauty supply stores, they don't tell you how to care for your hair and the hair there has been chemically processed to change the color and to give it a more shiny look that disappears after washing it. Destiny Hair Collection offers virgin hair extensions that have not been chemically processed and can last up to a year. Before starting my business, I would normally drive two and a half hours to Detroit to purchase hair or wait five to seven business days for my hair to come in the mail. There are very few salons in Grand Rapids that offer virgin hair extensions and also keep them in stock, which is the problem I am solving. Currently, I keep up to 200 bundles in stock at all times and offer same day delivery and pickup to my customers. 
My customers enjoy the convenience of not having to travel for their hair or wait five to seven business days for it to come in the mail. Their age ranges from 25 to 34 years old. Their annual income is, is between 28 to 44,000 per year. They enjoy shows like Love and Hip Hop, Basketball Wives, and Empire. Their peak hours on social media are between the hours of 5 p.m. and 9 p.m., which is how I currently market to them. I use Facebook ads and Instagram ads, and of course, word of mouth. I have monthly pop-up sales to meet my customers face-to-face -face and educate them on how to care for their extensions. Today, I've had seven pop-up sales, including two in Muskegon and two in Kalamazoo. I started my business with $1,800 in January of this year. I purchased inventory, marketing materials, packaging, and a website. I reached my break-even point after being in business for only two weeks. Six, since my business has grown, my new monthly fixed cost is $5,200. I would need to sell 75 packs of hair to reach that amount. At my last pop-up sale on May 6th, I sold 123 bundles of hair, totaling $6,100 in five hours. Prior to that, I had a sale on April 15th in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I did $4,400 in sales and was able to reinvest that money into my company and purchase a hair delivery vehicle. My plan is to continue increasing my customer base. One of the ways I plan to do this is adding blonde hair to my collection. Now it's a blonde sample to show you. So this is the blonde hair I plan to sell. It would include bundles and also closures and front sellers. I will use the prize money to purchase more of the blonde bundles and I will also use the prize money to market the new hair. Having blonde hair will allow my customers to have fun colors and they will also, it will also be cheaper for them to dye the hair. Having the blonde hair will also allow me to expand my customer base to different races. Also due to the success of my last pop of sale, I will use the prize money to hire event staff to assist with sales. For more information, you can stop by my booth outside. You can visit my website, www.bestfeet.com. <laughs> and closures to where you can get a wig made if that was your choice. So, so, so who is your end customer? Is it the individual or is it the, uh, the beautician? It is both. So I have connected with different beauticians who refer their clients to me. Because with my hair, since it can last up to a year, it makes their hairstyles look better. So I have them and then I have just the customer base who want to just come and get their hair done. I have a couple of questions. So you mentioned that your average extension will last about a year, right? Yes. So uh, what percentage of your customers are you expecting to be repeat customers? Well, so far I've had, it's been 33 repeat customers and I've had five people who have tested all three of my textures. So a lot of people, their hair will last two months because they like to switch it up. Like even though it can last up to a year, some people don't like to take their extensions out, wash them, clean them, and put them back in. They just don't feel comfortable with it. So they'll just throw them out and then buy more hair. Okay, so a follow-up question to that is, so how do you keep a, do you keep a client base so that you keep sending reminders and saying, hey, about that time you get a new extension? Yeah, so right now I do maintain an email list where I have 215 customers on my email list right now. I'm excited that you were able to break even in only two weeks. Um, but I have a question. What is your percent of profit margin for your business right now? 60%. 60%? Yes. You mentioned purchasing a mobile delivery vehicle. Is this a vehicle that you can actually do services in, or is it strictly a delivery vehicle? Just strictly a delivery vehicle. This video if you made it this far i really appreciate it and if you want me to go more in depth on different hair videos pretty much about how i got my salon started how i started my hair business drop that in the comment section below